All right, guys, I am back. It is still late. <laughs> this is this is the intro to this part two. I can only imagine how you guys are going to react when you wake up tomorrow and you see two videos. I don't do a video for three weeks and I do two videos in one day, but it's really just one big extended uh, vid uh, video. I feel like it's like one of those artsy kind of like artsy movies where everything is kind of like out of place and 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 thoughts are everywhere because I have I want to talk about some other things that I talked about earlier today and um yeah so I I, I was winding down my evening kind of just wasn't even sure what I was going to do about the YouTube thing and then I was telling Maria about you know eBay's big announcement about the well not the big announcement but what eBay is doing about like you know tracking our response time to our e to our messages and then I was telling her about Etsy as well and it's it's just always funny when 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 I say when I tell her something that's going on in my world and she's just, like like common sense prevails and it's kind of like <laughs> what are they doing so let, let's let just talk about ebay right now so i do want to go back and because i, I, I want to share with you her thoughts on this and and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna come out in a little ranty ish but um maria's like when, when i told her that she goes can ebay do anything to like help sellers because it just seems like all that ever comes out of my mouth that I'm relaying to her is about wait like like she she said everything eBay does is about limiting us it's about taxing us it's about costing sellers more money and it's causing us stress it's about causing us stress right like can eBay and 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 this this got into like eBay has it all wrong they have like I swear everything that they do is 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 wrong like if if you could if you could create a scenario a worst case scenario and implement it on a platform that's what they do time and time again they they constantly create time time constraints obstacles they slow our process down remember when item specifics was introduced the the pushback from the community i mean i really i mean i i wasn't even really on youtube then but i just remember when it came out i was like man this is just a hassle it's it takes longer to list now and it's like everything they do can they just do something that actually helps us please ebay if you're listening can you do anything because your magical innovations are are any are anything but magical. Like I, these are the questions. Okay, if, if you're listening, eBay, please listen very carefully. These are the questions that you should be asking in your brain trust in in whatever room that you have where you have people spitballing ideas. These are the questions that you should be asking. How can we help our sellers? How can we help our sellers? How can we make our sellers more money? Because when we make money, you make money. So really that's the question is how can we make more money? But not by taking from us, not by taking billions of dollars through promoted listings. How can we make our sellers lives easier? Because when, our, when, when the whole processes flow, we can list more. We can list more. And you know what happens when we list more? You sell more. Do you know what happens when you sell more? You make more money. Yeah, that's it. Those three questions. How do we help our sellers? How do we make our sellers more money? How do we make our sellers' lives easier? You should be focusing on these things. Because I promise you, the path that eBay is on of constantly taking, taking, taking for so many reasons, it's unsustainable. 
it's unsustainable other platforms are waking up other other people are getting involved other you know like i, I you know in the in i don't remember, know where but you know walmart ikea who knows who who knows what other platforms are either thinking of, about being created or what other companies are are thinking about getting involved i I really do believe I really I really do believe this and maybe this is naive I do I do believe that there will come a day and I doubt it will be J Jamie Iannone saying this because he probably won't be the CEO this day but I really do believe that there will come a day where somebody in charge of eBay will be like I wish we would have treated our sellers better because what what you are doing right now <laughs> Maria, this is Maria. She goes, you, eBay is, it's essentially like, the, it's like you're dating the people that you went to high school with, right? Because you're not working out. You're not, um, you're not making yourself better. You're settling. You're settling for the resellers who are with you now. But there are resellers coming into the reselling community that will never do eBay. They will never do it. Maybe they've heard too many bad things about it. Uh, maybe they just don't even, you know, they think it's a dinosaur because you're not advertising. You're not, you're not trying to bring in new, new sellers. You're not trying to bring in new buyers. If you brought in new buyers, then new sellers would come. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see here. Oh yeah. So the the messaging thing is it's insulting. It's insulting because it's it's treating us as if we don't already respond to our messages. Like Again, it's not a huge deal for me because I respond, like I probably respond, I'm probably in the top, I don't know, well, I'm probably in the top 1% of fast responses. I, I, I feel confident of that. My issue is that I don't like being told to do something that I'm already doing and I don't like being measured on this. Because again, as I mentioned some at some point in these two videos, that there are dumb, dumb questions that we get. Like I got a question today on on Facebook Marketplace uh, about about a size. Like I, it's a shirt, and it is a um, it's a small. I don't actually know like chest sizes of of men, and, and so I get this I get this question. Will this fit a size, a men's size 38? I don't know. I don't know how big that is. It's a small, it's a small shirt. And, and Maria makes this statement. She's like, when did we become a society where we expect other people to answer questions? Right? Like there, there's this wonderful thing called Google now. I don't know about you guys, but every once in a while I get questions about things that I'm selling that a simple Google search would answer that but no people want and, and if I know the answer yeah sure I'm gonna I'm gonna respond but if I don't know the answer I'll probably respond anyway I'm, I'm, I usually respond like yeah I don't know but but again there's sometimes there's people that I no response is warranted. I don't even want to respond to these people. And I just, I, I resent the fact that we're, that's going to, that's going to be held against us. Um, all right. So I guess I pretty much have covered everything that I wanted to rant about, uh, except for the one thing about Etsy, uh, well, not the one thing, um, like this just makes no sense at all. Honestly, I swear, I swear people in charge of these e-commerce e plat e platforms, I swear they've never sold anything in their lives. They, they, they could not possibly 
have any experience as a reseller because Etsy's thing is now they don't essentially want you to have shipping and handling over $6. If, if your shipping is over $6, you're going to be limited in search. So they, they made this, they made this uh, adjuster kind of thing where, and I did it today. I did it. I was like, you know what? I'll play their little game because I could just keep my shipping the way it is and have lower, lower visibility or their little calculator is there, there, imagine two little buttons. Each of them have a plus or minus sign on each one. So it, it, you did it by your, your shipping policy. So I had a shipping policy that was eight. And so you, you, you delete, you hit the, the, uh, the negative thing and it takes it down. So you, you, you go from eight to six and then you go down to your, and then it goes down to your price and then you up your price by $2. How, and, and and you did you do this for all your I mean you don't have to do it for your policies I mean you don't have to you could just lower your shipping but how is that makes any difference like whether the shipping is high or the price is high I don't know man I I it's in, again it's insulting and it's if I have a $25, if I have a painting that's going to cost $25 to ship, I have to factor that in. Shipping is a fixed cost that I'm not paying, right? Like I'm not, I'm not paying the shipping. I'm going to inflate the price to cover to that. So really, yeah, sure. Let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll inflate my price if that's what you want. And I'm going to be very strict about not accepting offers and, and, you will get less sales that way. I'll get less. I'll get less sales if if people somehow think that I can ship a painting or a very heavy object, which is going to cost me twenty twenty five dollars to ship. If they think that I'm going to come down in my price and give them six dollars shipping, well, that's not going to happen. Uh, I'll probably just end up selling it locally, and Etsy, you'll lose out in that sale. Uh, so. It just, when I saw, when I first talked about this, I hadn't seen that little calculator adjuster that I had. And after I saw that, I was just like, this is so dumb. I mean, you're basically just taking the money from the shipping and you're adding it to the price. Like you literally have created this tool to, to do this, to make it easy to adjust a large amount of listings. But what have we accomplished? The price is the same. It makes no sense. Rant over. Um, yeah, I don't want this video to go too long, so I don't want to have issues uploading this. So, two videos in one day. Ha. Anyhow, yeah. So, you know, I'm probably gonna do a what sold video. I'm probably gonna do a what sold video to get caught up, just just for the heck of it. Something that's easy, not 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 anything to rant about um yeah so anyhow there's some good bits coming uh in in this video i'm gonna get to the uh the the embryonic stages of a new e-commerce platform uh that uh, yeah i'll go into the, the the details of that see what happens there who knows all right guys take care so there was an article put out yesterday. Uh, I, you know, I sell a lot of Ikea stuff and I do pretty well. And I noticed, so basically the title is Ikea is taking on eBay to try to become the go-to destination for secondhand furniture online. Forget eBay and forget marketplace. Ikea wants its new website to be the go-between for people reselling its product line. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but to use it, sellers can enter the product name on their website or upload a photo. If they can't remember the name of the item, they can then choose the condition of the product, add photos, choose a price, while IKEA's own platform adds measurements and promotional images. That actually sounds quite, quite nice. When a customer buys a product through their website, they pick it up directly from the seller who can choose to accept money 
or an IKEA voucher with a bonus of 15%. To compete with other online resellers like eBay, listings on IKEA pre-owned will be free for now, and if there is a future fee, it will, it will be a symbolic or humble fee. Jesper Broden, the CEO of Inca, IKEA's largest retailer, told the Financial Times. Uh, this, comes, this move comes as IKEA has grown and enhanced its digital presence over the past few years. Uh, I, I went on, okay. The IKEA pre-owned service is going to be tested throughout the end of the year in Madrid and Oslo with the goal of eventually rolling out globally. I find that interesting. I I hope that they don't go down the route of not allowing their items to be sold anywhere but on there. But if that's the case, then this, I mean, this could be good too, because it would be a website where people who are looking for things at Ikea. So I don't know, who knows? I'm trying to not worry about things that I don't have any control over or worry about things that prematurely um, because it seems like I don't know man it seems like there's just so many things like I was just talking again I was talking with Jet today and we were talking about how like there's so many stressful things to being a reseller like yesterday uh, I had a guy who bought two CDs off of me and he paid, he offered me a, de uh, a an offer. I took it, gave him a deal, tried to upsell him, didn't happen. And uh, the next day he's asking me when it's going to be shipping out. Now, uh, you know, I, in my experience, these have been problems. People asking, you know, this is, it's like, it's not even been 24 hours. But they're wanting to know when it's going to ship out. <clears throat> so I said, "Hey, it's going. It's going out tomorrow." He gets it. I'm out yesterday sourcing. He gets it, and he's like, "Yo, man." He's like, "What's up?" One of the CDs, there was no CD in it, and I'm like, "I knew it. I knew this guy was going to be a problem." And I, what do you do? Well, I, I know it was in there. It's in the picture. I know it's in there. I'm not going to send the guy two CDs with one of them empty. And I end up giving him a discount. And he was happy with that. I know he was scamming me. There's 100% he was scamming me. Um, I mean, I guess there's a possibility that the post office did an inspection to make sure that it was a media mail purchase. Maybe the post office worker stole it. That's the only other explanation. It was there when I, when I, when I packaged it. Uh, I didn't listen to the CD. I I'm not. I don't really know the band NoFX. I know of them, but I've never listened to their music. And I mean, because sometimes I listen to the music to make sure that they don't skip or anything. And uh, I don't remember looking at the at the CDs, but I know that they were there. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, yeah, so it's like, but, but in that moment, right, in that moment, your mind immediately goes to, uh, this, A, this guy's scamming me, and there's nothing I can do about it, I have to just bend over and take it. B, if he really wants to sell it, um, you know, he could just give me a negative feedback and really act like he's so mad, even though he's just acting. Now... I don't know. I can't think of any other other any anything else that could explain how how or or, or what happened because I, I I I would never have shipped him a CD that wasn't in there. But anyhow, he was happy with his little bit of refund, and uh, he's already left positive feedback. That's done. I did call into eBay to see if he had a hit, like if it was a repeat offender, if it was somebody who who does this. They said no. So. I'm at a loss. But the whole point, the whole point in telling me telling this story is that we as sellers, there's so many things that we have to worry about, right? There's so many things. And and part of part of this is to blame for eBay because they don't really have our backs with negative feedback. Now, I say that 
I have never had a negative feedback not removed, but I haven't had one ever since they've started cracking down. Uh, I've had a neutral that was just pointless that they wouldn't remove, uh, which should have been removed because it was a complete lie. But it, by and large, it doesn't feel like eBay. And, and eBay had came out and they've talked about how they they weren't they weren't removing any negative feedback. They've doubled back and they've they they said that they've changed a few things, but uh, I've yet to really see it play out in the community. I've yet to see a lot of pop people talking about positive experiences with 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 having negative feedback removed. But but I digress. Um, so Walmart, IKEA. Uh, they are getting into the reselling. Uh, it feels like other, it feels like they smell blood in the water. Um, let's see here. eBay's, eBay stock. I wanted to talk, I want, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, the other, kind of like stocks in its in the e-commerce section uh but ebay stock nearly hit 60 yesterday and in my opinion it is a screaming short right now like based on everything that we know as sellers and we are experts on the website uh, we spend the most time on there. It would only make sense that they that, that eBay would actually involve us in some of these some of these things that they're doing. But no, no, that would be that would be too much. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I don't I don't like the looks of their stock at all. Um, PDD, which is the parent company of Timu. It was at 145. It was no, it was one, two, three, five days ago. It had gone over 150. Today it closed at 89.17. That's good news, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, <laughs> let, let me backtrack. I would rather them. How do I want to say this? I would rather this company suffer some losses than than go the other direction because I, I don't want to see cheap, poorly made uh, products and companies that make those kinds of products be be rewarded uh, because I don't think it's su sustainable for the economy or for the environment. I I'm, lo I'm looking at it purely from that standpoint, but it 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 shows. So you and then you've got Amazon. Amazon was hit hard uh, with their earnings that they put out August fifth. It's rebounded a little bit. Uh, Shopify still a dumpster fire of a stock. Uh, it's still so far off its highs. What's the other one? Shopify, Amazon, eBay, Posh is public, private. Oh, Etsy. Etsy. I knew Etsy is still a. It's an even more of a dumpster fire stock. Uh, it, it has, it's just been decimated. I mean, this thing was at 300 in 2021 and now it's at 50 and it's basically just been, it's been treading sideways since summer of last year and, and trending down. And so you've got the whole space, the whole e-commerce space, just, I mean, it's telling us something. I mean, I mean, one could surmise that it's telling us that the economy is far worse condition than it is. But then, and and then you add in the shenanigans that some of these platforms are doing, and it, it's it's no wonder some of our sales are are so poor. Like, um, I think it was like a week ago, James was talking about his sales, and he he kind of felt like eBay was back. I know Primo. He was kind of saying the same thing about his sales and how, how, how he was doing well and how eBay was back. And uh, I think a few other people were kind of commenting on that. eBay, in my opinion, is not fixed. It's not fixed by a long shot. Um, 
I'm down 4% on my store. I cannot, no matter what I do, I cannot, every sale seems like a struggle. I, Maria's store is down 14%. Now, I know for a fact that uh, I'm making up the, those losses on the other platforms that I'm, that I'm selling on. Uh, so it's not like, it's not like, it's not dire, but it's also like, it could, I know it could be so much more. For instance, I had, we were at a barbecue the other day and I was talking to a friend, uh, Maria and I's and, and she knows, she knows all the, all the BS that I've, that we've gone through as sellers for the last year and a half or maybe, yeah, last year and a half. And so she was asking me, she's like, well, how, well, how much do you, how much do you sell a day? Now, prior to her asking me that, and then she ended up going away and we never got to finish that conversation. Prior to her asking me that, I think in my mind, somehow I was starting to rationalize and think that eBay sales were, were, were kind of like, <clears throat> not back, but okay, right? Like maybe okay. And I think this is what eBay is banking on. I, I think Jack and I, we talk about how eBay wants X amount of years to pass. So a lot of the data that we see that would, that, that was before eBay did a lot of their stuff. So all that data in the back office is gone and we kind of have like the new normal. And I think on some level I was starting to be lulled into thinking subconsciously that maybe my sales aren't horrible. But then I got to thinking and I was like, okay, I, I was selling, I was actually on track to make this amount. And when I look at what I'm making now, it is, it is nowhere close to that. Like before eBay pulled all their shenanigans and basically just yanked all of our sales out, out from under us, I was on track to, to be doing $10,000 a month between the two stores. I saw a path that if I keep working, I keep listing based on my figures of month over month, year over year, I could, I could see a path to get there. Like it wasn't even a question of like, oh, I might get there. It was like, it was going to happen. And then I look at my sales now and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, uh, like, like eBay is not fit. My whole point in saying all of that is eBay is a shell of what it used to be. Bottom line, it's a shell of what it used to be. And it feel, it feels very adversarial. It feels like, it just feels like they're out to get us. It's like every update that they do kills your sales. Every memo or upgrade notice that they that they do, it's like we're trying to read between the lines and see what their true motives are because we're so jaded and um, jaded. I guess jaded is is the best word. Uh, I, and maybe that's why eBay wants some of us gone and I don't know if they want us gone but it sure does feel like sometimes that uh there's there's sellers out there that are, that are favored and then there's sellers out there that are are not favored and, and and it's just like on the outs looking in <laughs> I had a I had a, a seventh grade was he history oh my god this guy was a piece of work and he, and uh he would be like he, what did he always say? He would he would say, "You better stop messing around. You're gonna be outside looking in. Like you're gonna be outside in the hall. Look, like 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 that. That's a threat. Like that's a like. Sometimes it would have been better to have been on the outside and listening to him. He was so boring. My God, was he the most boring as history teacher in the world. Uh, but and now I think this is a good segue to talk um, a little bit about. So, so I've got two questions. So I've talked to Jed a couple of different times and, and he, he, he confided in me kind of like what he's, he, he's investing some money 
and uh, I don't know when it, 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 it's going to be launched. Uh, and I think it's still going through some, some, you know, he, he wanted me to ask a few questions and, and, and that might help him kind of determine the direction or, or just getting some good feedback. Um, essentially he wants to create his own marketplace cause you know, he's basically eBay has pushed him to do this, right? Um, he, 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 he gave he looked into district and there were things about it that he didn't like. He's not opposed to ever not doing district again, but he just decided, you know what? I know I'm speaking as if I'm him. Like I, he knows what he wants out of a, a platform. Uh, there are a few different, um, interesting aspects to his business model. Uh, number one, it would be, so, he wants to build it to where it's it's owned not really owned by the sellers but you how would you guys feel and and answer in the comment section a answer in the comment section i have two questions i want to ask you so uh maybe maybe do it all answer the questions in one in one and then and then I, and then also any questions that you have about the platform or any questions that you have about the questions uh put in the in the uh, in the same put it all in one one comment and so so each person's all their responses and and questions are all in the same one so how would you feel about buying into a platform where you have you know it's it's almost like you have a stake you do have a stake and you have a seat at the table when it comes to uh, changes, changes about, you know, the platform, it, things will go to a vote instead of just being at the mercy of a platform and, uh, you know, having to take it, right? Having to just deal with it, complain about it. And, and to be honest with you, part of me not doing videos is... I just don't have a lot of positive things to say about eBay. Number one, number two, I'm busy having to do all this stuff. So I'm kind of annoyed at eBay because of what they did. Um, it's fine, it's fine. But um, I got my train of thought. So, and, and then, and then so, so that's the first question. Uh, the second question is, If you were to give direct input, if somebody came to you and said, how would you like search to be, to run? Like, how would you determine whose results show up? Because we complain about eBay. eBay search is jacked and it's jacked because of promoted listings. It's jacked because they have to meet their quota of impressions because of you know promoted listings right like they're promoting your listings no they're not they're not promoting uh the greatest trick ebay has ever done is to convince you that promoted listings exist and they don't exist they do not exist in 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 the capacity that they are insinuating insinuating that they do at least not right now they they in my opinion i i see no proof that our I, I see no proof that our listings are being promoted advertised anywhere else um so so getting back to search how would how would you determine would it be price would it be you know it, it's it's a good question. It's a, it's, and it's, it's a tricky question because how, again, we all complain about search, but I never hear anybody offering suggestions on how it can be fixed. Now, obviously it can't, eBay's search cannot be fixed as long as promoted listings exist. Promoted listings will exist as long as Jamie is in office. 
That's my belief. That's my belief. Uh, so unless we can convince every single seller to stop promoting, which is never going to happen, uh, we either got to deal with it or find other platforms to sell, our, to sell our merchandise on, in which eBay loses money. eBay loses gross, gross volume merchandise. Gro gross merchandise volume, GMV. Yeah, they're so concerned about making a few percentage points off of each sale that they're missing the bigger picture of just sell more stuff make the site better make the sellers more money and maybe just maybe if sellers were making more money they wouldn't be trying to hold on to what they have with so much um, need because the economy is tight so so how would you how would you like to see an e-commerce platform's search run? We're really interested to see the different trains of thoughts uh, in terms of, uh, I'm especially interested to see how what, what Pete's gonna say. Pete and Biff, I'm, I'm curious to see, not to put you guys on the spot, I'm curious to see how, how, how you guys would, uh, would, would view that. There's a few others, I'm just blanking on names. So with that being said, I want to I want to stop this video. Uh, I've rambled. I don't even know how long I've rambled on. I and I don't want the video to go too long. I don't want to have upload problems. So peace and blessings to you all. I don't know when I'm going to make another video. It could be in a couple of days. It could be in a couple of weeks. Uh, I appreciate uh, the people that watch watch these videos who you know do the things like subscribe do all the things the yeah, for the for the uh, youtube algorithm because um uh, i think they've changed something as well talk to you guys soon bye